Friday evening, minus 16, feels like minus 27. Friday overnight, minus 25, feels like minus 38. Saturday afternoon, minus 16, feels like minus 28. And Saturday overnight, minus 16, feels like minus 26. Huh. No, thank you. Temperatures will be diving down into the minus 20s with wind chill values nearing the minus 40s for some localities as uh, that cooler air filters in right across eastern Canada. Temperatures have been quite mild this winter season. Oh man, I have to admit it. We're pretty spoiled here in Nova Scotia. Being on the coast, we don't really have extremely cold temperatures. Sure, it gets cold, but minus 40 for a wind chill? Ah! Not used to that kind of cold. Not for many years, anyway. Pretty sure it was two years ago we had a polar vortex. Maybe last year. I lose track of time. But I had some issues with my propane regulator freezing up on me. And um, I ended up buying a new one, this one here. And it turns out the other one was fine. It was just really frozen. So <laughs> I have the other one still in case this one seems to go when it gets really cold. But one thing I do want to do is try to at least cover this. I I don't exactly have like a, an area that's heated for the tanks or the propane lines, but hmm, let's see what I got. I did find an old tank cover. Unfortunately, this tank cover is for 20 pound tanks. So it's kind of short, but I should still be able to put this over the top and at least keep the freezing cold snow off of the regulator and the lines. And it's also got a zipper here to access them. But yeah, these should at least go halfway down the tanks that I have. And something is better than nothing, right? Well, <laughs> like I said, something is better than nothing, right? I could still kind of access the regulator. It's kind of facing the other way, but you know, you get the idea. It's a little, got some fuzzy warm stuff going on in there. Well, I don't know. Hopefully it does something. Please don't freeze. I'm lucky in that sense though. Because that right there is my heat source, my main heat source. So if the propane goes out, really that's just affecting the fridge and the stove for me for cooking. Also should make sure the diesel heater is good and full. Hmm. The more I look at this wood pile, the more I'm starting to think that I'm gonna run out before the end of winter. <laughs> I know looks can be deceiving, but really it's just this short pile in the front here less than a half pile in behind it and then this pile here. I could be wrong, but at this point I'm just wanting to get to the end of March with it. I mean, I don't know. Does that look like two months worth of wood to you? <laughs> uh, we'll see. Keep you guys updated. One last thing to prepare is uh, get gas for the generator because getting kind of low. I am worried that the electric start might not work on a very, very cold day. And unfortunately, my pull start cord broke. So, cross that bridge when we get there. You know, sometimes it's the little things we don't think about sometimes, like putting your jerry cans in a plastic bag if you have to store them in your car so you don't smell the fumes everywhere. So thank you to the people who mentioned doing this. Um, as you know, before I had my truck and I could just throw them in the bed of the truck and not smell them and it was great, but don't have that option anymore. So thank you, makes a big difference. 
Whew, I am working hard at getting a really good hot fire going here. It is officially Friday, the day that we are supposed to get extreme cold temperatures for this area. I'm off all weekend during this really cold weather, so I'm kind of glad about that because I will probably be stuck here babysitting this wood stove. Um, first thing this morning, I went and scooped all the ashes out of the stove because I'm going to be burning a lot of wood, so the ashes are going to end up piling up pretty high in there. Also cleaned all the creosote out of the chimney pipe and gave the chimney outside a little bit of a sweep too, just to get any creosote and debris out of there. I'm going to be running hot fires as hot as I can for the next 48 hours to try and beat this cold. I'm just checking the latest information. So we've got extreme cold warning for all of Nova Scotia. A period of very cold wind chills is expected and Arctic air mass will combine with strong and gusty northwest winds to give bitter bitterly cold conditions by tonight. Wind chill values of minus 35 to minus 43 are expected to develop late night and will persist into Saturday morning before beginning to moderate Saturday afternoon as temperatures warm up. Burr. Yeah, I'm definitely laying low this weekend. Um, like I said, we're just not used to those kind of temperatures here with being on the coast and everything. So it's kind of just coming out of nowhere. And when your body is not used to those sort of temperatures, um, it seems extra cold. <laughs> A little breezy out here. We're getting some big wind gusts. Oh, it's frozen. But I am going to bring this propane tank inside. I'm going to dig out my buddy heater too because I have a feeling that tonight with temperatures going that low, I'm probably going to need a second heat source because even as hot as I can get the wood stove in those temperatures, I'm probably going to need more heat toward the bedroom. And even though the temperature is really starting to drop out there, it's very sunny right now. So we got some okay solar coming in. 1.7 amps. It was a lot better earlier, but um, it's come down a little since then. All right, I've got the buddy heater all propped up here and ready to go. It's a good idea. I'm just going to test it to make sure it still works. It was put away there for quite some time. Let's see. Taking its time, but I think it's going to do something here. I'm going to say, I really hope I have propane in that tank because it was hooked up to the barbecue. <laughs> Looks okay for now. Hopefully it's got enough juice. I'm going to shut it off to save or try to conserve um, what I do have for propane because I don't know how much propane is in that tank. However, one good thing is we know it works. Um, I do have another propane tank outside that I can grab if need be. It's a 20 pound one, a little bit bigger than that, but I can't stress enough the importance of having multiple heat sources. So the propane furnace in this camper hasn't worked properly for a number of years. I don't even use it anymore. I don't even try. But obviously my number one heat source is the wood stove. Um, in the really cold temperatures, like I said, even getting a really hot fire going, there's so much of a draft in here that the bedroom is cold. So tonight I probably will put that buddy heater on and have some heat shooting back in the bedroom there. So we got the wood stove, we got the buddy heater, we've got the diesel heater. Hopefully we'll be fine with all three of those heat sources. That also goes for anyone who is on the power grid. You should also have multiple heat sources because my worry is with all this wind we're getting, I would not be surprised if many people ended up losing power with the high winds that it's calling for tonight and tomorrow. And with the extreme cold temperatures, I really hope that you have a source of heat that isn't reliant on the power grid. We're not affected by the power going out here anyway, are we? Look at this kid. No worries in the world. <laughs> He's warm now. It's minus four currently. Feels like, who knows, probably minus 15. And it's 20 degrees in here. The sun's shining on the camper, so it feels warmer. He looks warm and comfortable. But I'm going to keep you guys updated and see where we're at temperature-wise tonight. Okay, so it's getting colder. Minus 10 now. It's about 4 p.m., a couple hours after the last update. Got a pretty good fire going, but I find I'm leaving the draft open a lot and just letting it get really hot. 
Obviously when it starts to get close to here, a little too hot, I close off the draft. I'm trying to keep as hot of a fire as I can at this point. And I stacked up the wood pretty good, but sadly I will probably have to stack it up again before bedtime. Voila, supper is served. Just a simple goulash with parm. That's what I was feeling. Ramsey? Oh, oh, what is that smell? Oh, whoa, 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 no, not for you. All right, I'm working on some boiling water here. We've got a wind chill factor of negative 25 outside right now. I've always wanted to do this, but it usually doesn't get quite this cold out here. Well, I reviewed that footage and I realized that most people throw it up in the air directly above their head. Yeah, you try throwing a pot of boiling water over your head. <laughs> Anything can happen. Temperature update. It is minus 16. Feels like minus 26 outside and a balmy plus 26 in here. You don't find it cold in here, do you, Ramsey? I mean, you're looking pretty comfortable to me. You just need some sand and a drink in your hand, buddy. Now, an inside temperature of 26 might seem pretty warm to some of you, but um, I'd rather be too warm than too cold. And I'm trying to keep it really warm in here so that when I go to bed, I'm not an icicle. With temperatures like this, I will likely have to probably get up through the night and um, stog the fire because if I don't do that I will probably wake up very uncomfortable and cold and then trying to get a fire going from scratch in these kind of temperatures just doesn't sound fun to me. I really don't think the cats are going to be going out on the catio. It's just way too cold. Often when it's cold I'll just have the pillow there so that I don't feel a draft coming through the catio door, but if they really want to go outside, they can knock the pillow over and go out. But um, I don't think they're even going to want to go out in this. And if they do, too bad. It's just really too cold out. <laughs> I'm sure they can go back out again in another day or two, but I'm going to lock the cat door. And I'm also going to shut this outside window. So I'm glad I left that option here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's frost all along the window and the top part of this cat door. Same with this down here along the door. That's frost. That's what happens when temperatures get this cold here. Frosty. So right now, this is the coldest temperature we have had this winter by far. Um, I have been in this camper with colder temperatures. However, the temperature is going to continue to decrease tonight. So I'll keep you guys updated. I hope it's not going to decrease by too much, but I'm really just hunkered down in here enjoying some hard seltzers and babysitting that beast behind me. <laughs> Feeling pretty lucky though that these temperatures are not the norm for my area and I don't have to deal with this all the time. Um, yeah, pretty much 48 hours of this and then on Sunday our temperatures are supposed to go back up to the freezing mark which is totally fine and easy to deal with. Quick temperature update. It is almost 11.30 minus 20 outside with a wind chill of probably minus 30 something and 20 in here. That might seem like a warm temperature, but when it's that cold outside, 20 in here is not overly warm. So I'm trying my best to get a really hot fire going right now. Come on, fire. Throw your heat. Yeah, with temperatures like this, I am definitely going to have to set an alarm to get up and stog the fire because the temperature drops way too quickly. 
earlier I had it up to 28 in here um, but now we're down to 20 I don't want it getting much colder because there's such a draft in here from lack of insulation that it feels much colder than 20 once again Ramsey looks pretty warm but uh, you might have to move off the couch buddy because it's cool enough that I might sleep there to be closer to the wood stove what do you think about that to be honest if this little thermometer here is not in the best combustion area if it's over here it's way too cold in here if it's over here the stovepipe is too hot and it's dangerous so I need to keep the fire going where it's in this area um, it's pumping off the heat now finally but I can't close the draft all the way because it just starts to cool down in here too quickly so I I have the draft full on open now but I pretty much have to close it only halfway um, to keep a good hot fire going it's 20 degrees out there and in the bedroom it's 16 so a whole four degrees cooler in the bedroom Rory doesn't seem to mind it he likes the cooler temperatures but uh, I can't say the same I've been messing with the wood stove you know adding wood to the fire probably every hour so I'm not really sure what kind of sleep I'm gonna get tonight at this point my focus is just trying to keep it warm enough in here at the same time the last thing I want to have to do is completely run out of wood tonight and run out in the tent shed in the freezing cold to get more it's a battle with this fire now we are up in the too hot zone it hit like 500 degrees or went a little past and there you're running the risk of a chimney fire so like I said it's really hard to keep it perfectly in the center there but that's kind of the goal temperature check it is now after midnight minus 21 outside 22 in here is about the warmest I can get it and I mean I have got that wood stove stogged full I had to like throw wood in it's so hot I had to throw a piece of wood in and slam the door <laughs> draft is not fully closed it just gets too cold if it's all the way closed um, and it's just a little under 400 degrees buddy heater is on at the end of the bed I don't know if you can see it but I need it like it's it's cool in the bedroom let's just put it that way it's drafty yeah my feet are cold yeah good morning 5 30 a.m. 5 I missed the first wake up I did which was around 3 o'clock in the morning when it gets really cold too I forgot to mention this before um, I've seen this when it gets really cold outside my little monitor here messes up do you see that weird markings I don't know why it does that but minus 22 wind chill of who knows the fire has been so hot today that I don't really have much crud sticking to the glass of the door so that's nice the difficult thing about this is that I'm stogging this wood stove so much that I have such a huge pile of hot coals built up in there that it's kind of hard to pile the wood in but anyway whoops good for another little while I'm going back to bed for a couple hours almost 9 a.m. and uh, temperatures coming back up today the wind has died down snowed again through the night a little bit it's gonna be another cold one today but not nearly as cold as yesterday or last night earlier when I said the wind died down I think it picked back up again 
minus 17 now it's 11 a.m. and it's 22 in here but my wood supply is getting a little low I'm gonna have to venture out to the woodshed and get more to keep this thing going by the way my kettle is not being used right now um, it just got really really rusty inside and the water was just so muddy like I would dump the water out and it would just pretty much be black so I got some SOS pads. I think I'm going to clean that up and season it and maybe spray it with some high heat paint too. And uh, yeah, get that back on the wood stove and get it rolling again. I ended up cleaning off the solar panels because, believe it or not, in this weather, the sun is out. Yeah, trying to warm my toes by keeping them up off the floor. Restock the wood pile. The floor in this place is freezing cold. Um, I didn't insulate underneath the camper, under the floor. I've got skirting up, but that doesn't do much in this kind of cold temperature, so... Putting on my boots and going outside to clean off the solar and to uh, get wood. Yeah, my feet are freezing. Overnight temperature here of minus 23, and I believe the wind chill was around minus 40. So it was a it was a cold one, probably the coldest one that we've had in this area for a number of years. And today with this wind, you guessed it, there are a lot of people without power. Not really a situation you want to be in when it's this cold outside, but uh, some people even have had difficulties starting their generators because their generators were so cold. You know, if they keep them in the garage where it's unheated, yeah, a lot of people had trouble with that and had to put their generators next to like a wood stove to warm them up. <laughs> One thing I can say for sure is that I'm very, very glad we don't have temperatures like this regularly in the winter time. The people that live this lifestyle in areas that do get this cold and stay this cold all winter long, I don't know how you do it, and I really don't know how you do it if you don't have a wood stove. Um, I feel like propane heat, like your propane furnace in your camper, just wouldn't pump out enough heat to really keep you warm. I'm sure you're still feeling the draft and you're still feeling the cold. I don't know how you do it, honestly. Four season campers might be better in that type of situation. This camper is not a four season camper, so I can tell you when I was sleeping in the bedroom, I felt the cold coming through the wall. <laughs> Even though I'm stuck inside babysitting the wood stove for the next day or so now, I guess, um, it does make me feel pretty lucky that I'm warm and I'm safe. And as long as I'm stogging the fire, I don't have much to worry about at this point. Yeah, long story short, don't 100% rely on the power grid ever. Have backup. Whether it's a generator and some plug-in heaters, or it's a buddy heater and some carbon monoxide detectors, um, and a wood stove. If you can, try to have a wood stove because if your power goes out, or if your generator fails, at least you have wood heat. Glad I cleaned off the solar panels because with that sun, I'm finally getting a little bit of juice in the batteries. Yeah, we are on day two of this cold snap. Everything's going to go back to normal for here tomorrow. I think it's supposed to be plus three. So that's good. So one more day of cold weather, uh, one more night of cold temperatures, but it is not going to be as cold as it was last night. With that said, thanks for keeping me company in the cold. Hopefully you're warm and doing well. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully I will catch you in the next. Bye. Somehow my propane regulator didn't freeze up in this cold snap, so one point for this thing.